questions. Except that there are a whole bunch of exemptions when that doesn't apply. There's a whole bunch of situations where it's basically, but in these cases, you don't have to tell them. Um, Mia Singh, who is here, as we spoke today, who's been riding multiple times, he explained how most of the time when he's in the party, he's been riding in his car. Well, if you're riding in your car, please stop you. You have to give your identification. And so all the rules and regulations that they're putting in that car no longer apply when you get stopped in your car. Meaning if the police stop you arbitrarily in your car, there's no accountability for that, there's no documentation of that, there's no receipt, there's no rights information, there's nothing. So they started by putting in some draft regulations saying, you know, here are our goals, we want to stop arbitrary stops, but they didn't actually go far enough in doing that. And so what is specifically would you, like, give me an example of some of the wording, I guess, that you would want to see in legislation, in new legislation that actually goes through and is in order to resolve that? The only time when the police should be taking somebody's criminal person is when they we believe that the only time that the police should be taking someone's personal information is when they're investigating a specific crime, and they can connect the person that they're speaking to with that specific crime. Other than that, there's absolutely no reason for the police to be documenting people who are roaming around in the or walking home or driving to work. There has to be a specific reason, and that language needs to be in there. All of these exemptions, all of these buts and ifs and ands, which erase all of the protections that they wrote down, those aren't good enough. And do you still think that, you know, if that specific government is putting in, is there any reason that the black community is still being targeted? Well, we know that the black community is being targeted, and another thing that we want specifically is statistics collected with anyone who is documented by the police to know who they are stopping. This whole story would never have come to light unless we were able to prove disproportionately that the police have been stopping black, indigenous, and other racialized groups. And of course, they have been doing that. So the only way we can follow up in the future is with a rule that says you will document exactly who you stop every time you take their information, without exception. And then we can analyze the statistics to understand if the police behavior is changing. And what about the auction of data? Is there still concern about um, holding some information? So another change that we'd like to see is that right now there is no time limit on how long you can keep the information that you've got. And we think that that is a huge breach of privacy and serves really no value except to continue to criminalize people who are in the database. So we have to destroy all of the information that's already been collected. That often gets forgotten. My information and the information of hundreds of thousands of other civilians, law-abiding civilians in the city, is in a Toronto Police database. There's nothing in that regulation saying that that information will be gotten rid of forever and that no one will be able to access it. So there's a long way to go here in achieving the stated goals that the province said it wanted to do in ending this practice. So what's next now to get your opinions heard? Have you spoken to the province directly about this? Or is there going to be any future meetings to to, uh, it gets help shape what actually comes forward. You know, the people who joined me on the stage here today to talk about this, we've been in constant conversation with the province. We've provided written feedback. We've had verbal face-to-face -face meetings. We've participated in every form of consultation. The message seems still not to be getting And so we're just going to continue standing up for what we believe is correct and standing up for our charter rights in this country, whether that be holding press conferences like this, holding public events, doing public education, in order to make sure that people know what's at stake here. There is a lot at stake here. It's people's lives, it's their future, it's their ability to work, it's their ability to get a background check without all of these kinds of things coming up. There's a lot at stake here, and so we have to continue.